Let's see how merge sort works. We start with an array and the idea is to recursively divide it into halves until each subarray contains only one element. If at any point the array has an odd number of elements, you can place the extra element in either half. Once we reach the base case, that is arrays with just one element, we begin merging them back together in a way that keeps the result sorted. For example, if these two are out of order, we merge them so that the resulting array remains sorted. Next, we merge these two sorted subarrays and then the next two, making sure each merged array stays sorted. Now we have two larger subarrays and just like before, we need to merge them while keeping the results sorted. And that's it. The array is now fully sorted using merge sort. Now let's see how merging two sorted arrays works. We have two example arrays here and both are already sorted. First, we create a new array with a size equal to the total number of elements in both arrays. Then, we run a loop over both arrays, highlighted here in purple. And at each step, we compare the current corresponding element. Then we copy the smaller value into the new array and move the pointer forward in the array from which the smaller element was taken. We repeat this process, comparing elements, copying the smaller one and advancing the corresponding pointer. Once we reach the end of one of the arrays, we simply copy all the remaining elements from the other array into the new one. Now, let's look at the code for this merging process. First, we define a function that takes two sorted arrays as input. Then, we initialize an empty array called result, which will store the final sorted array and two variables i and j, both initially set to zero. These will be used as pointers to track our position in the two arrays. Next, we start a while loop that runs as long as i is less than the length of the left array and j is less than the length of the right array. This means the loop will continue until we reach the end of one of the arrays. Inside the loop, we compare the elements at index i in the left array and the index j in the right array. If the element in the left array is less than or equal to the one in the right, we append it to the result array and increment i by 1. Otherwise, we append the element from the right array and increment j. Once the loop ends, we extend the resulting array using the remaining part of whichever array still has elements left. And finally, we return the result array. Now, the code for merge sort is pretty easy and straightforward. We start by defining a function that takes the array as input. And if the length of the array is less than or equal to 1, we return the array as it's already sorted. And this is our base case. Otherwise, we calculate the midpoint by dividing the array's length by 2 and store it in a variable called mid. Then, we recursively call merge sort on the left and right halves of the array. Next, we merge the two sorted halves using the merge function and return the result. The time complexity follows this recurrence relation. At each level, we divide the array into two halves. And the merging step takes O of n time. Solving this using master's theorem or any other method gives us a final time complexity of O of n log n. As for the space complexity, the only significant space used by this algorithm is during the merging step where we create a temporary array of size O of n to hold the sorted result. Then, recursive calls also use stack space, which is logarithmic. But this is negligible compared to the space used for merging. So, ultimately, the time complexity remains O of n.